Welcome to John Recap, reimagining the art of storytelling, recap style. It does not matter how slowly you go as long as you do not stop. Today, I'm gonna recap third season of 2016 action, horror, comedy series called Z Nation. Make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any fresh updates. A young, attractive folks lounging poolside, seemingly unconcerned about the zombie apocalypse. An elegant lady brings a phone to a table, and a weathered hand belonging to an older individual picks it up. This hand dials a number and contacts a sharply dressed bald man known only as the man. This man possesses a metal container full of prisoners in hoods, his infamous list. There's one name still untouched, Dr. Harold Teller. Dr. Teller is hiding at Mercy Labs, now a secluded compound for a few survivors. They won't surrender Teller to the man. In response, the man seizes Nature Boy, a nearly wild child, and uses him as leverage, giving Teller 24 hours to reveal himself. Nature Boy regains consciousness and escapes from the man's vehicle upon discovering a live zombie in the trunk with him. He dashes through the wilderness and accidentally encounters 10K, who, along with Roberta, Addy, Doc, and a half Z Cassandra, is battling zombies. Murphy is also there, holding his zombie B Lucy. Following a brief encounter with Nature Boy's sister, Red, the group returns the siblings to the compound. Soon after, they're enlisted by Dr. Harold Teller to protect the place from the man and his armed followers. Rumor has it that the man acts as some sort of avenging angel, targeting scientists linked to the zombie virus outbreak. Given that Dr. Teller's work was supposedly focused on fungus-based painkillers, he's perplexed about being on the man's list. The actual nature of Teller's research is unveiled when Murphy begins hearing whispering voices. He tracks them to Teller's lab, where he discovers two severely deformed people in prison, begging for mercy. The shock deepens when one of them turns out to be Dr. Teller's wife, Dr. Sarah Teller. The Tellers were developing a fungus-based antidote for the Z virus. When zombies attacked the lab, the cure became airborne, shielding the infected from turning into ZS but turning them into grotesque fungus monsters. This revelation rattles Murphy, who wishes to leave, but Roberta convinces the team to stay and protect the compound from the man. Meanwhile, 10K forms a bond with Red and Nature Boy, whom Doc playfully dubs 5K after the kid starts emulating his new role model, adopting jet black hair and all. 5K was raised by crows, so he possesses survival instincts and has become adept with a slingshot, thanks to 10K's tutelage. As the sun sets on this peculiar day, Roberta conducts reconnaissance around the perimeter and spots the man. However, it turns out to be a zombie decoy, and the man and his troops knock Roberta unconscious. She is now among the hooded prisoners. Nonetheless, the team at the lab sticks with what Doc terms Plan A. Plan involves liberal use of red paint, transforming the compound's walls and metal sheets into an imposing fortress. Everyone dons red hazmat suits, embracing a color scheme evoking violence, blood, and intensity. Will this be enough to unsettle the man? He presents his own red item, Roberta's bandana, and demands an exchange for Dr. Teller. Doc needs proof that Roberta is alive. He obtains more than that when Roberta speaks on the walkie-talkie, freed from the metal shed thanks to 5K knocking out the guard with his slingshot. In response, the man releases a swarm of zombies. This provides an opportunity for everyone to showcase their marksmanship, learn from Roberta. She, 10K, Red, and 5K circle back to provide support. The man then deploys a trump card, a squad of zombies with makeshift metal helmets that render them mercy-proof, protecting their heads. The gang is overwhelmed and retreats to the lab. Sarah and her fellow fungus creatures reveal their combat skills, dispatching the man's henchmen. Sadly, Sarah sustains severe injuries, prompting Dr. Teller to grant her mercy. Suddenly, the wall erupts and the man emerges from the wreckage, clad in an improvised hazmat suit made of sarin wrap and duct tape, complete with a helmet. He incapacitates Dr. Teller and carries him away, leaving Murphy in awe. The gang deals with the remaining mercy-proofed zombies using well-coordinated gunplay, escaping the lab. They spot a helicopter transporting the man's container of prisoners to an unknown destination. Red is devastated to learn that 5K is missing, and she charges into a horde of approaching zombies in a fit of rage. The metal container arrives at the upscale house glimpsed. The prisoners are brought poolside, their hoods removed, and they confront their enigmatic host. Meanwhile, 5K rests in a field, surrounded by a group of crows. Roberta, Addy, Doc, and Hector find themselves encircled by Pan-Asian soldiers, led by Sun Mei. She's traveled all the way from Beijing in pursuit of the Murphy, aiming to cultivate a cure for the zombie virus. Initial tensions aside, the operation by Temark team gradually establishes a somewhat friendly rapport with Sun Mei's squad. Together. They trek through the wilderness towards a supply drop, contending with the usual persistent zombies and a new menace, deranged, famished, feral humans known as the Enders. Sun Mei's crew is well equipped with advanced weaponry like the anti-zombie grenade, which deploys multiple green lasers for targeting and launches nail-like projectiles that detonate upon impact. Additionally, they present Addy with an enhanced Z-Whacker featuring electrifying enhancements. Murphy reaches the shore accompanied by the submarine's captain and Dr. Merch 
both influenced by his bites. 10K is also with them, begrudgingly aligned with his least favorite person. Murphy has grown disillusioned with humanity and rejects the idea of providing a cure for Zona. He devises his own post-apocalyptic strategy, populating the world with blends, essentially humans under Murphy's control. Meanwhile, the journey to the supply drop proves perilous, resulting in Sun Mei losing her entire troop along the way. Upon finally reaching the supplies, they discover the cache has been plundered. Murphy has beaten them to it, arriving in a fortified military vehicle. Murphy and Roberta engage in a tense confrontation, with Murphy having a sniper, 10K, ready to act if anyone makes a suspicious move, 10K, who has now been bitten by Murphy. Failing to persuade Roberta and her group to join his cause, Murphy departs, leaving them to hike back to Hector's truck and embark on their new mission, preventing Murphy from propagating his new race of blends. Citizen Z and his faithful dog are saved from freezing by a girl named Kaya. In their last encounter, Citizen Z appears to be settling into a semi-retired existence in the zombie-free hinterlands, alongside Kaya's aunt and uncle Kasky. The mysterious figure known as the man possesses a scrap of paper with Murphy's name on it. He traces the trail left by Murphy's vehicle. The group is closely tailing Murphy's path while Sun Mei traces his hijacked military vehicle, affectionately dubbed the Murphy Mobile by Hector. However, they soon realize that Murphy has discarded the transponder within a zombie's body. Their knowledge of his whereabouts dwindles, and they find themselves in McLeod, California, grappling with shortages of fuel, sustenance, and provisions. Unexpectedly, they encounter an unlikely ally, Wally Becker, a former postal worker who uses a mail truck and takes refuge in the local post office. Wally, despite his apparent loneliness, reads undelivered Christmas cards and feeds zombies what he claims is Rodko. This raises suspicion, particularly since the zombified residents of McLeod follow him exclusively due to their affection for him, though they ignore others. Roberta is especially wary, given this odd behavior. Sun May attempts to communicate with her laboratory through a two-way radio at a local motor pool but she only picks up a melancholic tune. This melody acts as a code indicating the mission's termination and the demise of her reinforcements. Elsewhere, Kaya encourages Citizen Z to regain his strength and return to broadcasting, though he questions whether anyone remains to listen. Kaya's efforts to use her radio yield no results until she stumbles upon the same tune played by Sun Mei's team. While she finds it beautiful, Citizen Z perceives it as sorrowful. Addy tries to use the radio to contact Citizen Z, who can hear her but lacks the necessary equipment to respond effectively. The communication abruptly ceases, leaving Addy frustrated. Later, Roberta's group, now in a functional postal van, informs Citizen Z about Sun Mei and their inability to reach him. Citizen Z learns that Kaya and her family are starving. He realizes their dire situation when they rapidly consume the food he shares. This prompts him to suggest a solution for their hunger. In McLeod, the survivors grow weary of the enigma surrounding the zombie's fixation on Wally. Roberta takes Wally's firearm, while Sun Mei collects a blood sample from him. Wally's blood exhibits no peculiarities. Following this, Wally agrees to provide supplies and food in exchange for their departure. As Sun Mei conducts further blood tests, Wally leads the group to what he claims is a fully stocked emergency shelter in the basement. To their dismay, they discover numerous postal workers' corpses, accompanied by a horde of zombies waiting to attack. Wally escapes as a battle ensues. Wally takes Sun Mei hostage and guides her to his workshop, a grisly space adorned with remains. There, he reveals his twisted motive, 17 years of resentment as a mailman, receiving no greeting cards or love letters, only disdain for his job. During the outbreak's onset, Wally exacted revenge, killing his co-workers and the town's inhabitants, becoming the last image they saw before turning into zombies. Sun Mei opens the door, unleashing zombies into the room. They overwhelm and kill Wally, transforming him into one of them. She reunites with the group, and they flee McLeod, leaving the transformed Wally behind. Elsewhere, Team Murphy faces traffic jams due to a blocked road in the zombie-infested landscape. They encounter a desperate young couple whose dying daughter elicits Murphy's sympathy. Moved by their plight, Murphy offers to help and administers a Murphy bite to the child. Arriving in Spokane, Washington, Murphy's group finds a waterfall pivotal to his plan of creating blends. They settle at the Museum of Progress, where Murphy establishes Dr. Murch's lab, his personal quarters, and his throne room. A place for Lucy is also designated. Much to 10K's surprise and subsequent disappointment as he's assigned to sweeping duty, Murphy reclines on his throne when Dr. Murch informs him of visitors, the couple whose daughter he saved. Grateful for curing their child and relieving her fears, the parents thank Murphy. Their daughter embraces Murphy, and her father humorously asks if Murphy would bite his wife. Murphy smiles. Meanwhile, Citizen Z, Pup, Kaya, Nana, and Uncle Kasky journey on a sled back to the Northern Light military base through icy conditions. Roberta, Hector, Sun Mei, Addy, and Doc stumble upon a bridge adorned with gutted zombies, bearing the ominous message thieves written in blood on the wall. After dispatching the zombies, the group encounters armed locals who reveal that their town fell victim to the Red Hand, a fanatical band of vigilantes led by the enigmatic Scorpion. 
An attack by the Red Hand forces the gang to seek refuge in an abandoned novelty factory. Hector speculates that this Escorpion might either be an impersonator or someone adopting the former Escorpion's sinister legacy. Meanwhile, Sun Mei and Doc prepare for an improvised dental procedure on Addy, who's suffering from a debilitating infected tooth. Roberta inquires about the Red Hand's vendetta against the locals, Clive and Ryan. It turns out that the town incurred their wrath by stealing the Red Hand's food supply, leading to the bloody warning on the bridge. The Red Hand strikes again, launching an assault on the factory with Molotov cocktails and zombies rigged with explosives. An explosion nearly claims Roberta's life. Clive and Ryan identify the tattoo on Hector's arm, branding him as a scorpion, though possibly not the one they're seeking. Faced with no other option, Hector is compelled to kill them both. Following their deaths, the Red Hand retreats, prompting the gang to hit the road once more. Meanwhile, at the Museum of Progress in Spokane, Murphy pressures Dr. Murch to develop the vaccine that will transform his growing followers into blends, paving the way for his envisioned new Murphy order. Murphy's health falters due to his frequent blood donations for research. Dr. Murch discloses that Murphy requires periodic injections of the original Z virus vaccine to prevent devolving into a state akin to patient zero in Colorado. Dr. Murch administers the original vaccine to 10K in secret, freeing him from Murphy's control. She and 10K plan to destroy the blend vaccine and escape. However, Murphy catches wind of their rebellion and infects Dr. Murch with a fresh mind-controlling bite. Just before Murphy can test the blend vaccine on 10K, he seizes an opportunity to escape, clutching a bag of the original vaccine and plunging into the turbulent waterfall, evading Murphy's pursuit. In a final act of defiance, Dr. Murch takes extreme measures to liberate herself from Murphy's influence. She ventures into Murphy's zombie moat and injects herself with the original vaccine. As the zombies swarm around her, Murphy screams in protest, witnessing the end of his control over Dr. Murch. Surviving his plunge into the Spokane Rapids, 10K makes it back to shore clutching the bag of the original vaccine, also known as Murphy's Medicine. However, he finds himself immersed in a series of crises. Murphy's lead enforcer, Will, is quickly on his trail, tracing 10K's path through the woods by the blood drops from his reopened stomach wound. In this unforgiving wilderness, 10K encounters an unexpected savior, a vision of Red, his former love interest who perished. Red assists 10K in navigating the treacherous terrain, which proves fortunate as a new threat lurks, a seemingly wolf-like pack with distinct characteristics. Securing a motorbike and a firearm from a passing traveler, 10K falls into a trap set by bandits, ending up chained to an abandoned vehicle. Stripped of his usual weaponry, 10K ingeniously employs car parts, windshield wipers, hubcaps, to fend off attacking zombies. Will, empowered by Murphy's bite, dispels the remaining zombies and captures 10K, leading them towards the bandits and the stolen bag of Murphy's medicine. Will fails to comprehend why 10K seeks to distance himself from Murphy, as Murphy saved Will's family and eradicated their fears. When a zombie overwhelms 10K, his conviction wavers under the notion that Will might have a valid point. They stumble upon the stolen motorbike and the corpse of one bandit, surrounded by numerous tracks diverging in various directions. This unnerves Will, who insists on an immediate return to Murphy. 10K seizes an opportunity, seemingly ending his life by leaping off a cliff. Following cries resembling his fallen ally, 5K, 10K tracks the sounds to a clearing where wolf-like creatures gather. 10K defeats them using a metal post, only to uncover the female bandit, now a zombie, beneath them. After dispatching her, 10K retrieves the bag of Murphy's medicine. He experiences a final hallucination with Red and 5K, who, in this dreamlike realm or afterlife, can speak and boasts 1,139 zombie kills. Meanwhile, Murphy's stability wavers further. He interrogates the remains of Dr. Murch, who chose to meet her end in the zombie-infested moat rather than continue serving Murphy. Murphy struggles to grasp her decision, her refusal to live in the world he aspires to rebuild. Her notes remain indecipherable to him. Fueled by his unchecked urges due to neglecting his medicine, Murphy consumes Dr. Murch's brain, gaining comprehension of her scientific jargon. This revelation enables him to continue her work. Will returns to Murphy, claiming 10K's demise. Murphy remains skeptical. Believing that 10K will ultimately return to Roberta and the group, Doc finds himself separated from the group and involuntarily admitted to the Serenity Falls Institution for the Criminally Insane, a psychiatric hospital inhabited by an eclectic assortment of patients overseen by Nurse Ratched. The facility is surrounded by zombies. After being knocked unconscious by a patient who mistakes him for Elvis, Doc regains consciousness restrained in a straitjacket, under the scrutiny of Nurse Ratched and her cohorts. Doc's spontaneous psychological assessment of the patients impresses them enough to earn his release from restraints and a role as Nurse Ratched's colleague. Ratched takes Doc to meet the institution's most recent and problematic arrival, 10K, who's nearly catatonic due to the lack of the vaccine preventing him from succumbing to Murphy's control. Nurse Ratched had scheduled a lobotomy for 10K, but Doc persuades her that 10K is suffering from 10K fever and requires medication. Doc learns of a fully stocked pharmacy on the Z Ward, 
a section overrun by zombies turned during electroshock therapy. Doc and Elvis navigate the wing, retrieve the drugs, and return in time to prevent Nurse Ratch's intended lobotomy. Doc administers an impromptu cocktail to 10K, followed by medication to address various patients' conditions. Elvis brings 10K, who's feeling super mellow, to Doc's presence, and 10K updates Doc on Murphy's plan to establish a new world order in Spokane. They endeavor to escape from the institution. However, Nurse Ratched intercepts their escape attempt, having them restrained in straitjackets. After Doc informs her of their mission to take Murphy to the CDC for a Z-virus cure, Ratch dismisses their claims as delusional. She prepares to perform a lobotomy on Doc, but a robust patient named Bob intervenes, killing Ratched. The patients rebel. Doc rallies the patients, fleeing to a bus parked outside as zombies breach the feeble barricades. Outside, 10K collapses, and the patients depart in the bus, leaving Doc and 10K behind. Doc discovers 10K's Murphy bite and worries about his friend's condition and the contents of the vials in his back. 10K implores Doc not to disclose his state to Roberta and the group. The patients depart aboard the chaotic bus, crushing a zombie on their journey to an undisclosed destination. The man roams the open wilderness, evading a shot aimed at him, and swiftly decapitates the shooter with his machete. He discovers a corpse marked with a bulldog tattoo, a symbol he uses to infiltrate Murphytown. In another scenario, a poor bastard is pursued through the woods by a group of zombie children led by Wesson, a member of Murphy's officers. The poor bastard finds refuge in a tree but succumbs to the persuasive charm of the good word of Murphy. The scene transitions to him grinning as a blend within Murphy's stronghold in Spokane. Wesson selects individuals for the blend vaccine based on their skills. Murphy's vision of a new world order necessitates a diverse workforce including farmers, electricians, bankers, and more. Though some professions, like bankers, are assigned less glamorous tasks such as latrine duty, skills deemed valuable result in vaccination, a feat Murphy achieves by consuming Dr. Murch's brain. Murphy detects the man outside the fence, his name being the sole entry on the man's list. The man seems to be planning an insider action, possibly aided by having received the blend vaccine. Meanwhile, Doc and 10K reunite with Roberta, Addy, Sun Mei, and Hector. Roberta expresses skepticism about 10K's condition, but he conceals his blend status, despite Doc's reassurances. 10K discloses Murphy's grand intentions in Spokane, along with the Red Hand's grim deeds along their journey. Murphy's campaign proceeds as the team encounters a truck broadcasting his fear no more, guaranteed message. The vehicle is attacked by the Red Hand, with the blend driver dead at the wheel, highlighting that blends don't reanimate as zombies after death. 10K divulges Murphy's plan to retrieve Lucy, his daughter, from Springfield, IL. Speculating that Lucy might inherit her father's immunity, Sun May proposes retrieving her before Murphy does. The group splits, with Doc and Addie pursuing Lucy, while Roberta, Sun May, Hector, and 10K aim to thwart Murphy's new world order in Spokane. Upon reaching the city's outskirts, 10K flees when Hector discovers his Murphy bite. At the Museum of Progress, Murphy convenes with associates to discuss restoring power. Suspecting opposition to his plans, Murphy orders a basic training program for stronghold defense. The man offers assistance to Murphy and gruesomely demonstrates his skills by extracting poor bastard's brains from Murphy's research. Testing the man's loyalty, Murphy commands him to consume the displayed brains, which he does eagerly. A flashback reveals the man's use of a severed arm to mimic the blend inoculation. Murphy tests the man's allegiance by ordering a brain feast. Later, the man confronts Murphy, presenting his severed hand. He aims to deliver Murphy to an unknown client but is interrupted when Cassidy overpowers him. Handcuffed to Murphy's throne, the man learns that Murphy's daughter is safe. Murphy witnesses the restoration of power atop a clock tower, with electricity illuminating Spokane. However, the man escapes, leaving Murphy with a severed hand and a defiant message. Meanwhile, Citizen Z leads Kaya and her family to the Northern Light Listening Station, restoring power and broadcasting a message of hope received by Doc and Addie as they head to Springfield. While on their way to find Lucy in Illinois, Doc and Addie's truck breaks down, leaving them no choice but to continue on foot. The sound of sirens heralds the arrival of an unusual sight, a retro presidential limousine occupied by none other than their old acquaintances, Sketchy and Skeezy. Sketchy has taken on the role of president of the apocalypse, with Skeezy serving as his campaign manager. Despite their skepticism, Doc and Addie join them on their journey to Waldrug, South Dakota. Addie muses about the antics of these two characters, comparing them to Tweedledum and Tweedledee. Upon reaching Waldrug, they enter a saloon and orchestrate a spectacle to draw the town's inhabitants out of hiding. Sketchy's impassioned speech wins the favor of the locals, though his interactions with them raise suspicion from the town's elected mayor, who questions his presidential claim. Doc follows a local to a quarantine area where people are dying from a mysterious illness characterized by a yellow iris. Addie is ready to leave when Skeezy's scam starts falling apart, but Doc convinces her to stay and help the town unravel the mystery. Zombies from a neighboring town, Rosebud, begin invading Waldrug. It's revealed that Rosebud's residents have also fallen victim to the same illness. 
Doc takes initiative, hotwires a motorcycle, and rides to Rosebud. There, he discovers that a contaminated water source is the cause of the illness shared between the two towns. However, Sketchy, focused on the election and fundraising efforts, rejects Doc's findings, leading to tensions. Amid the chaos, zombies and disgruntled victims of Sketchy and Skeezy's past cons create havoc. In the midst of it all, Addy and Doc commandeer the limousine and escape the chaos of South Dakota. In an unexpected twist, it turns out that Doc inadvertently wins the election and becomes the true winner. Their adventure with Sketchy and Skeezy and Wall Drug ends with a mix of humor, chaos, and unexpected outcomes. At Northern Light, Citizen Z and Kaya are broadcasting until Murphy interrupts, using their frequency to promote his Fear No More campaign and his Murphy Miracle vaccine. Meanwhile, Roberta, Sun Mei, and Hector are preparing to infiltrate Murphy's compound. Sun Mei discusses her experimental vaccine that aims to weaken Murphy's mind control while retaining immunity to the Z virus. Roberta sneaks after Murphy, who heads to Porta Pot as labeled Mr. Murphy and everyone else. Hiding in her designated stall, Roberta's cover is blown when a horde of zombies approaches. She escapes through the back wall just in time, infuriating Murphy. Meanwhile, 10K, captured again, is questioned by Murphy about Roberta's plans, but he remains silent. Recognizing that she can't take on Murphy alone, Roberta decides to seek the help of an existing army, the Red Hand, who are known for enforcing justice. Hopper, claiming to be the Red Hand's drug dealer, leads them to a scorpion, their leader. A scorpion's story closely resembles Hector's own history. Guided by Hopper, Roberta, Hector, and Sun may venture into underground Seattle, the Red Hand's headquarters, characterized by eerie decorations and a brutal sense of justice. After an encounter with CS, they meet a scorpion, revealed to be Javier Vasquez, a former member of Operation by Temark. However, Vasquez has lost his sanity, having reinvented himself as a scorpion, the enforcer of the Zero's gang that killed his family. He doesn't recognize Roberta or Hector, even after their attempts to jog his memory. Roberta and Hector's emotional tactics fail to trigger his recollection. Vasquez attacks Hector, but Roberta kills him with her machete. Hector is injected with Sun Mei's experimental vaccine and doesn't turn into a zombie after succumbing to his wounds. The Red Hand members, who witnessed this, seem to pledge their allegiance to Roberta. They accompany her back to Spokane to confront Murphy. Meanwhile, Doc and Addie reach Lucy's home in Springfield, IL, witnessing her interacting with zombies. Lucy's adoptive father confronts them with a shotgun. In a surprising twist, Hector regains consciousness with cat-like eyes, suggesting a potential transformation into a new kind of zombie-human blend. The story takes unexpected turns as the group confronts their past and prepares to face Murphy's forces. In the Museum of Progress, things are getting darker as Murphy dives into the Enigma of 10K. He instructs him to perform the knife game, a move popularized by Bishop the Android in Aliens. 10K follows the order, even cutting his fingers, and is also given the original vaccine by Murphy. This vaccine can restore his humanity, but 10K refuses to take it. Murphy is the one making the decisions here. Others seem to embrace being blends, but 10K remains nearly catatonic. Maybe it's the name, 10K. It's not just a name, it's his mission, his purpose. Does he need a new mission, a new purpose? Murphy suggests one and nicknames him Thomas. Meanwhile, Doc and Addie face Ma Kettle and Pa Kettle at gunpoint, the guardians of Lucy, Murphy's hybrid daughter. Lucy appears older than expected due to being Murphy's child. Doc and Addie try convincing Lucy's foster parents that they know her real father and want to take her to him. However, they're almost in danger when they can't provide the correct password set by Murphy for anyone seeking his daughter. Doc thinks it's Smurf due to Lucy's blue skin like her dad's, but it's incorrect. Fortunately, Lucy takes a liking to them and wants to play. Lucy's playtime involves zombies dressed as pirates, princesses, and more. Her Z-controlling power keeps her safe, but it's risky for Doc and Addie. A game of hide-and-seek turns tragic when Doc Mercy kills a hostile zombie, prompting Lucy to throw a tantrum and flee into the woods. She encounters an ender, but Addie rescues her. Back at the house, Lucy inquires about her mother, leading Doc to spin an elaborate story about Murphy and Serena as the apocalypse's king and queen. In his tale, Lucy is conceived through a blueberry pie, explaining her blue skin. Why did Lucy's mother leave? After protecting Lucy from zombies, she had to rest in a distant land. Things seem to be going well when Ma and Pa Kettle agree to let Lucy travel with Doc and Addie to see her father. However, the man appears, attacking Lucy's foster parents and making them doubt Doc and Addie. The man takes Lucy, leaving Doc to mercy kill Pa Kettle. A grieving Ma tries to harm Doc until Addie intervenes, finishing her off. To find the man and rescue Lucy, Doc and Addie split up. Doc contacts Citizen Z or Roberta, while Addie chases the man on a motorbike. Meanwhile, Lucy's abduction doesn't go as planned. She talks non-stop to the man, who tries to silence her with a taser. Lucy finds it amusing and asks for more. The man takes drastic measures, hooding Lucy and tying a rope around her neck. Strangely, Murphy, miles away in Spokane, feels the experience psychically, struggling to breathe and feeling hot. 
And there's more. When the man removes the hood, he's in for a surprise. Lucy has aged five years. 10K departs from the Museum of Progress, studying a note containing Murphy's new mission. The writing is partially obscured, but find Warren and bring her to me. Is discernible, hinting at his upcoming task. Doc finds himself in an open field, holding a handheld radio tuned to a sultry female voice reciting Edgar Allan Poe's The Raven. Tracking the signal's origin, he arrives at a castle-like structure with a central radio antenna. Entering the garden, he encounters bedazzled zombies resistant to gunfire. These zombies are somewhat domesticated, roughing up Doc instead of attacking him. He glimpses the women responsible, Sarah, Linda, and Camilla, who exude an alluring yet deranged vibe. Doc becomes their guest of honor, awakening in a luxurious bedroom with hand-knitted clothes. The women pamper him, serving stew and dandelion wine. Despite the comfort, Doc needs to contact Citizen Z using their radio. They allow him to try, but his efforts fail. Suspicion arises when the microphone's wires aren't connected. Unaware of any danger, Doc enjoys their company while they wait for sunrise to test the radio. Sarah shares her macabre scrapbook. Linda plays the organ, and Camilla recites poetry. Doc discovers that the microphone's wires are disconnected, hinting at deception. Still, he relishes their companionship. The lady's affection for Doc leads to them interrupting his attempts to rest, culminating in a room full of lingerie-clad women. Doc wakes surrounded by them. Missing his clothes, he heads to the kitchen, only to find Stu with a finger in the sink. A transmission from Kaya prompts Doc to investigate the radio. He encounters disconnected wires under the table. As Linda attacks, he retreats. Exploring further, Doc realizes the women's gruesome decoration with human remains. He finds male prisoners and learns that they're him from the near future. The women create art from their captives' bodies. Freeing a prisoner, Doc returns to the living room, facing the masked women wielding weapons. The basement prisoners intervene, allowing Doc to escape to the radio tower. Doc fixes the radio, contacting Citizen Z about Lucy's kidnapping and Addie's pursuit. Camilla, Linda, and Sarah breach the tower. Doc topples the antenna, escaping in a pink robe. At the Northern Light listening station, Kaya tracks the man's phone transmission, acquiring his coordinates and Lucy's. They attempt to reach Roberta. Doc steals a bike from a zombie, embarking to reunite with Addie. Meanwhile, the women commemorate Doc's escape with a keepsake from his beard in Sarah's scrapbook. Murphy Town is under attack. The Red Hand has teamed up with Roberta and Sun May, and they're gearing up for a significant event at the Museum of Progress. Unbeknownst to them, Kaya from the Northern Light is lending a hand by keeping a close watch on Spokane through full surveillance. Simultaneously, Citizen Z and Kasky are en route to Washington in a small biplane. Tenke, who seems to be blindly following Murphy, gets caught by Roberta. She roughs him up a bit, uncovering his orders from Murphy on a yellow piece of paper, retrieve Warren and deliver her to me. If she refuses, end her life. To test his blend status, Roberta administers the original vaccine to 10K. In a surprising twist, Murphy himself appears. He's dressed like a dictator in a black coat and gloves, sporting newly bleached hair. The remnants of his blue skin form a scar-like pattern around his left eye. He and Roberta clash over their opposing worldviews before Murphy takes 10K back to his hideout, seemingly confident that the group won't breach his fortress. However, he's shaken when the red hand cuts the power and a banner appears on the museum tower, instilling fear in his followers. 10K teams up with Murphy's blend named Auerbach to restore electricity at the Washington Water Power Company. Auerbach is shot by red hand members while attempting to negotiate, and 10K faces a zombie attack. Fortunately, Red and 5K save him. Their escape is cut short as Murphy summons 10K back to the museum. Roberta and Sun may manage to infiltrate the Museum of Progress during the ongoing siege of Murphy Town. Murphy observes the chaos from his throne room, occasionally using mind control to boost his soldiers' confidence. Sun may heads to the lab, and Roberta searches for Murphy. She encounters Hope, who shoots but misses. Roberta kills Hope, leading to a poignant remark about Murphy's feelings. In the lab, Sun may is found by 10K, who's confused. Red and 5K urge him to help Sun may though he doubts their existence. A kiss from Red dispels any blend influence. 10K assists Sun May, but they're held at gunpoint by Wesson and his men. Finally, the anticipated showdown occurs, Roberta confronts Murphy. She plays on his Z-impulses, offering Hope's brains to illustrate his loss of humanity. They fight, with Roberta evading Murphy's attempts to bite her. She points a gun, but Cassidy's arrival stops her. The drama is interrupted by an approaching biplane, Citizen Z. Kasky lands the plane nearby allowing his passenger to meet Roberta, 10K, and Murphy. Citizen Z relays Doc's message about Lucy's kidnapping. Murphy and Roberta form a truce to plan a rescue mission. Citizen Z wants to join but decides to return to Northern Light upon receiving exciting news. Kaya is pregnant. Addie follows the man, interpreting Lucy's clues. Lucy's location is pinpointed at an old boat yard, where she's accompanied by a group of new zombie friends. Just when it seems Addie and Lucy might escape, the man intervenes, brutally attacking Addie with a gas can. A fierce battle ensues between Addie and the man, occasionally interrupted by zombie attacks spurred by Lucy's cries. 
The first round goes to the man as he traps Addy on a burning boat. She escapes just before the boat explodes. Fortunately, Lucy has left a severed zombie arm that guides Addy's way, restarting the chase. On the road, Lucy proves to be a nuisance, teasing the man with a morbid song. The man responds by plowing through zombies until Lucy promises silence, creating an oddly cute dynamic. Addy gains the upper hand in the second round, setting an ambush, shooting the man, and commandeering his truck along with him as a hostage. As they drive away, the man reflects on his bulletproof vest's effectiveness. Meanwhile, Doc trails Addy on his bike, finding clues left by her at the boatyard, including the zombie arm pointing the way. Thinking the man might be incapacitated, Addy and Lucy indulge in a shopping spree. Addy's new outfit resembles an action figure, while Lucy learns the practicality of an apocalyptic wardrobe. The topic of Lucy's mother triggers a tantrum, during which Addy imparts the harsh reality of death in this world. The man suddenly appears, sparking a chase along the river, leading to another intense battle. Despite a brutal beating and a dislocated shoulder, Addy ultimately loses the third round, with the man escaping with Lucy. Lucy's growth continues as she becomes a teenager, around 15 years old. Craving chocolate, she frustrates the man, who reluctantly sets out to find her a sugary treat. Doc experiences hallucinations involving a DeLorean and himself dressed as Doc Brown alongside 10K as Marty McFly. Addie remarkably recovers, even resetting her dislocated shoulder against a tree. At a general store, the man and Lucy search for chocolate. Lucy bonds with zombies, interpreting their communication and desires. Annoyed with the man's behavior, Lucy leaves through the back, letting him deal with the zombies. Lucy bites a zombie with a grandpa sweater, setting it on a mission. She starts the truck and crashes into the man, who escaped the store, getting her revenge for the zombies he hit earlier. Addie and Lucy briefly reunite, but the man re-emerges from beneath the truck, driving off with Lucy again. Addie encounters a mother and daughter, offering them protection. The girl handles a gun adeptly, fending off a zombie. Addie leaves them reunited. Further ahead, Addie and Doc unite and set off in pursuit of the man. Meanwhile, the zombie with the grandpa sweater continues its solitary journey toward an unknown destination. Lucy has aged once more, appearing about 18 years old. She's exchanged her taunting behavior for a serene calm, which is actually her psychic communication with Grandpa Zombie. He guides Doc and Addie, who are chasing after Lucy and the man. His skeletal finger points the way, repeatedly growling Lucy. Following closely is a rescue team comprised of Roberta, Murphy, Sun Mei, 10K, Red, and 5K. They're en route to Mount Casey, guided by Kaya's surveillance. However, concern grows as Citizen Z hasn't been in contact for 12 hours. 10K's condition has worsened. But Sun Mei is hesitant to administer more medication due to the previous treatments he's received. The man and Lucy reach Mount Casey, where zombies and a Zona SWAT team await. The team obliterates the zombies, revealing their deteriorating immunity through glowing eyes. The man plans to arrange air transportation to Zona for him and Lucy. Doc and Addy arrive, directed by Grandpa Zombie, but they can't access the man's entrance. Grandpa indicates the mountain's peak, urging Addy to climb while Doc waits outside. Despite the perilous ascent, Addy ascends, leaving behind her Z-Whacker. Doc indulges in Z-Weed, but his tranquility is disrupted by more Zona troops. After tying up Doc and Grandpa, the Zona soldiers enter the mountain but soon become zombies themselves. Fortunately, Roberta and the team arrive, dispatching the Zona zombies. Grandpa is destroyed by Roberta, unknowingly eliminating a potential ally. The group enters the mountain, preparing to confront the man. As they progress through the catacombs, 10K collapses, prompting Sun Mei's revelation that they must kill him to save him. Like Murphy in the past, they plan to choke, die, bite, inject 10K. Roberta strangles him, Murphy bites him, and Sun Mei administers the original vaccine. Sun Mei, Red, and 5K stay with 10K while the rest proceed. Roberta, Murphy, and Doc confront the man and Lucy at the mountain's peak. Murphy and Lucy briefly reunite before a shootout ensues. The man's bullet pierces through Murphy and Roberta, who collapse, knocking out Doc. The man grabs Lucy and heads to a Zona aircraft. Patty arrives, having scaled the mountain, and tackles the man, sending both over the edge. Lucy follows, screaming for her Aunt Addie. Subsequently, 5K appears and joins Lucy's leap. An ominous Zona ship opens fire, apparently annihilating Murphy, Roberta, Doc, and those present at the mountain's peak. Make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any fresh updates.